If you've seen any number of my videos on GA4 on this platform, you know that it's not my favorite Google product release. It's just been a real challenge compared to Universal Analytics and the 10 plus years that we had with that product to get really used to it and ingrained. One of the things that has been a challenge is getting the data that we need for our clients out of GA4. And I actually have been using a different option within the GA4 interface that's been really useful. So in this video, I wanna walk you through the Explore tab of GA4, talk about some explorations and how we've been using them to get the data out of our accounts. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. I'm in one of our client accounts that has a decent amount of volume, and I'm on the Reports tab within GA4. Currently, this is just the snapshot, but you can see there are tons of different reports that we have over here on the left. And in Universal Analytics, the reports section, or anything named reports, was mostly where we got the type of data that we needed. You'll notice that this account has a handful of different sections in that left-hand navigation that might not be showing up in yours. If you're interested in building custom collections and customizing the reports within GA4, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But this is one of the areas that I found lots of limitations within GA4. Although we can come down here to the library and we can create custom collections or custom reports, whether they are detail or overview reports, I find that most of them don't have the cross section of data that I would like. The tool that does seem to work for me is the explore tab. That's gonna be just below reports and the home page is gonna look like this. Although we have a lot of things blurred out, you can see that we do use explorations quite a bit for our accounts. Now, as we get into this, you'll notice that there is a ton of customization you can do within explorations in GA4. And I could put together a video that's a couple of hours long trying to cover every single part of it, but that's not what I'm gonna do today. What I wanna run through are the fundamentals of how the explorations work, what the components are, and then give a quick overview of some of the formatting that you can use. My goal is that by the end of this video, you'll feel confident enough to start tinkering with explorations on your own. And then over time, we'll start to put together more detailed videos, walking you through specific portions of the explorations to show a bit more advanced views. For now, consider this the 101 class on explorations. From this home tab, there's a handful of different things you can do. You can come to any of the existing explorations if you have them. If you don't, this section will be blank. And then you can choose to make a new exploration, either by using a blank template, or you can use one of the preset ones from GA4, like Freeform, Funnel Exploration, Path Exploration. And if we go over to the right, there's gonna be even more over here for segment overlap, lots of different options that again, we'll talk about later on. There is also a template gallery that you can go to, and this will show you all of the different preset templates that you have access to. Clearly, there's a lot that can be done with these. I'm just gonna scroll back up because what I wanna do is start off with a blank template just to show you how each of these works. The nice part about using a blank template is that you get to see all of the different components really easily. So I'm gonna go through each of these while I start to put in some examples. And each of these different columns over here on the left are going to impact the data that we see over here in the section on the right. First thing you can do is give it a name, easy enough. Then you get to choose your date range that you want it to be. I'm just gonna leave it as the date range that's there, but you can choose all sorts of different options here, even a custom option. The next three sections down here, segments, dimensions, and metrics, are where we're going to decide what types of information we see over here on the right. This is where all of our controls are going to come. And then it's just a little bit of a preview. This section here, the settings option, is going to be how they are displayed. So let's go through these three components or the variables that are going to be part of this exploration. First are going to be segments. And Google doesn't give a very good definition of this, but think of these as buckets of users on the website. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button here. And now we get to build a new segment. And here's where you can see these come pretty close to mimicking the audiences section in GA4. You can create a custom segment or you can use one of their references. I don't wanna to get too far into building all of these 
but just start to think about how you can build some audiences. And I'm gonna build a couple really quick. Pretty basic, I just created users from the US, group of users that are on mobile devices, and then anybody from a paid campaign. Next are going to be the dimensions that we wanna have. And again, to get started, we just need to click the plus. And here's where we get to choose the different information that we want to understand from our users. A common one that my clients use, that I'm gonna use as an example in this video, is wanting to know where conversions come from, which session source and medium. So I'm gonna put in session source and medium, as one of my dimensions. It's pretty easy to just type it in at the top because then it filters for you. Just check the box here. You can see that I have one of 177 selected. And then rather than click import, I'm gonna go ahead and add in that I also wanna know the event name. Again, click the checkbox. And now I'll click import. Now our dimensions are set up, but we still haven't done anything yet. Now we need to know the actual metrics. So again, for this one, just click the plus and we can add in all sorts of different metrics. So let's go into the event section since I am gonna be using events. And let's go ahead and do event count, conversions. And then let's say I also wanna find which channels are bringing in new users. I can come down here to user, scroll down a little bit. And then new users is gonna be one of the options. I could also add in something around the session of the user, like what is their average session duration and maybe bounce rate. All of these metrics can be really interesting to me. So I wanna see how each of the different source and mediums are performing and get some of the event name insights too. Now let's click import. Now we've chosen all of the different variables that we wanna utilize in our exploration. So now we need to hop over to the second column, talk about all the different formats of how we can use it. For now, I'm just gonna stick with free form, which is going to effectively be like building a spreadsheet. I'm gonna keep the visualization as a table, and then we'll start to add in the different options here. As you can see, we can get segments, rows, and then we can format the rows that we wanna use. We then have columns, we can then format the columns, and then we have the values. There's also filters down here at the bottom, and we might get to that in just a little bit. So the first thing I wanna do is start adding in some of the data points here. We're gonna start off really basic, and we're gonna use the session source and medium as one of our rows. So to do that, we just need to come over here, click on the little six dots, drag it over as one of the rows, and now it's added. You'll notice there's still nothing there because we haven't added any values. So the easiest option is to just say new users. Drag this over, put it in the values section, and now you can see new users based on the session, source, and medium for this time frame. If you wanted to then add the event name, potentially, as one of the different columns, you just come up here to event name, click, drag into the column section, and now you can see the event name associated with the new users. This is a pretty simple one because it is a first visit that would be associated with it. But the nice thing is GA4 does a pretty good job of showing you what components can go where because the dimensions are green, so they can be either columns or rows, and the metrics are blue, and they can only be in the values section. I'm not gonna get too far into how to format these different columns and rows because I think they're pretty self-explanatory. But down here in cell type, you can see that there's the option to use a different table, whether it's plain text or a heat map. Let's do a heat map. Now you can see that they've color coded it a little bit differently so that it doesn't quite look like the bar chart. This might be a little bit easier to use, especially if you have tons of data that you're looking at. But you'll still notice that we have these options here to add in additional dimensions or additional metrics. So maybe I wanna ditch the event name as a column but I wanna see all of the metrics for all of these traffic sources. All we have to do is drag and drop each of them over. And now you can see all of the different metrics are showing up with the source medium dimension that we have in place. That's just a couple of the pieces that we have here. We scroll up, remember that we have these segments. We have these different audiences we can use. So if we bring in maybe just the paid users, let's drag and drop this over here. And now you can see we have the data for new users based on all of these different traffic sources and all the different information, you will notice that Bing and Google are going to be the highest pieces here. But then there's also total rows over here as well. If I drag in US users, now we can start to see the nuance between each of the different segments. New users have a pretty high bounce rate compared to the paid users. And there's a lot more traffic coming from direct compared to some of the paid channels. But there's a lot of different data points that we could utilize here. You'll remember, we're only utilizing the table visualization, but we could use a donut chart, line chart, scatter plot, geo map, or bar chart, depending on which one makes the most sense for the data that you're looking at. Again, this is not the video I'm gonna walk you through every single one of these. I just want you to know how the components work. And in that same vein of teasing additional functionality that I'm not gonna walk through today, you can see technique up here is freeform, but you can change this to cohort, funnel, segment overlap, path, 
user explorer, or user lifetime. These should look pretty familiar because each of these is going to be corresponded to the original templates that we used when we started to create a new exploration. So if you started in a blank template like I did, or even a free form, which is what I have here, and you decided that you wanted a segment overlap instead, you can easily change that. But here's the other really cool thing about explorations. Who says you can't have both? If we click out of this, you'll notice up here that this says free form one. You can change the name of this really quickly, but then to add a new exploration, you just need to come over to this plus, click this, and now you can create an entire new exploration within the existing exploration that we have. Let's go ahead and just do segment overlap. Now, the reason I did this is because I wanted to show you that the segments, dimensions, and metrics that you applied in the first exploration also apply to any subsequent tab that you have here. You'll notice one strange thing is that the session source and medium is not usable in the segment overlap form, which isn't great, but that's okay. But that means if you build out an exploration that has, I don't know, maybe 10 tabs that looks at all of the different data points that you want, you might have a handful of different segments, dimensions, and metrics that are used in one tab, but not another. And that's okay. You just need to make sure that you add or import any new metric, dimension, or segment into the exploration, and then you can apply it on each tab without impacting the other. So that's effectively how explorations work. The last thing I wanna show you is this tiny little section of options up here. First, we do have an undo button. So if you decide you don't want something, you can undo it. And then if you change your mind, even on changing your mind, and you wanna redo it, there is a redo button, which if I were to click the undo button, that would pop up. You can also export the data. So this comes in really handy for me when I'm using these free form data tables, because I have all this data here, and then there's only so much I can do with it so I can come over to export and I get it in a CSV and I can do anything I want with it, get any client report built fully just the way they need it. And then the last piece is going to be this share exploration. This is really important. When you click share, you'll see that this exploration will be shared with all users in the explorations property in read only mode. This is the only option we have for sharing. If I wanted to share this, I would click share, but since I just built an ugly report, I don't want to but there is an important portion of this share option, and that's the read only mode. If I cancel out of here, and I cancel out of this exploration, since I don't actually wanna save it, you can see on this main tab that even though they're blurred out, there are two different owner names, first group and then the second group. That means that some of these explorations have been shared with us by another group of people. If I were to click into any of these types of reports, let's do paths and exits, just so you can see what that looks like too. You can see the type of path exploration that we used to see in UA, which is really cool. But you'll then see that I don't have the option to change the date range or any of the dimensions or any of the other options. So if this is a report you're trying to share with your client so they can get their own information out of it, what they would need to do is come up here to make a copy. And now you'll see that I have the exploration name of copy of paths and exits. I have all of the different controls that I want here and I can move things around. This is really helpful mostly because of date ranges. I found that a lot of my clients need the same report month after month, so I build them an exploration, they duplicate it, and then each month all they have to do is change the date range to the month that they want. The nice part is if your client tinkers with the report and they realize that they've gone too far and they don't know how to get back, all they have to do is come over here and click start over and it'll revert them right back to what the copy of the paths and exits report was. You'll then see that the copy of paths and exits report is now owned by us in the main explorations tab, but none of the other teams that are in here would be able to see it. And I personally don't wanna see it. So I'm actually going to go through here, click on the three dots, and now you'll see all the different options that we have, either open in a new tab, you could share it, duplicate, rename, or what I'm gonna do, delete. Yes, I'd like to delete that. Overall, explorations are an extremely powerful tool when it comes to GA4. I would liken it to a custom report builder in Universal Analytics, but if anything, might even be a little bit better because of the visualization options and the multiple tabs that are in there. You don't have to create a brand new report every single time you want new data, every single time you want a new visualization. You just need to create a new tab. As I mentioned, we'll be doing more videos around explorations and how you can use them more specifically for your clients, but hopefully this overview has given you the confidence to start tinkering with them yourself and start getting back to normal with your data out of a Google Analytics product. If you have any questions about the fundamentals of explorations or anything else about GA4, feel free to leave us a note in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. 
If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.